God is good. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us adjust ourselves right now. Hallelujah. We come to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Sort of. The devil's been lying. Oh, yeah. 
The devil's been lying. God loves you. He's been there through, through the thick and thin. Amen. And for such a time as this, you hear. Amen. Amen. Not by chance, not, 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 not because, but because of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. You, Come on now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for being there all this time. No matter what, you've been there, Lord God. Through thick and thin, you've been there, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Lord God. We worship you in this place worship you in this place. Come on, church, lift your hands up. Worship you.
Come on, lift your voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Glory. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We are not alone. Through thick and thin, you in the midst of the storm, you're with us, Lord God. Through our trials and tribulations, you're there, Lord God. In the water, in the valley, you're there, Lord God. Through everything, we can count and we can call on you. We lift up this time, committed in your hands, Lord God. We bless you. We thank you for all you're doing in each and every one of our lives, God, Lord God. Bringing us to this point. The enemy has tried to take it us out from way before, but you have, bring it, you have brought us here for such a time as this, Lord God. We thank you for your presence, Lord God. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is healing, deliverance. love you. We honor you in this place, Lord God. We lift up those, Lord God, that came before us, Lord God, to preach the word. We thank you. We just give you glory. We lift up all the associate pastors and their family, Lord God. Bless them. We lift up the youth pastor and his family. Bless them. We lift up the missionary and his family. Bless him, Lord God. We lift up apostle of the house, Lord, and his family. Bless them, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. Surely, God, without you, where would we be? Where would we be, be now? We honor you in this place, Lord God. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood that was spilled on Calvary. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we pray and say, Amen and Amen, Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bless, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. You know, as I was coming up here, I am an Avenger fan. I, yes, I am an Avenger fan. And I am reminded of the Avenger scene where where uh, Iron Man says, well, we got a Hulk. You may have this, this, and that. Well, we got a Hulk. I'm like, yeah, wow, that's pretty awesome. We got a Hulk. Kind of be nice to have a Hulk. And then God drops it on me, and he says, and I got an apostle. So we are blessed to have an apostle in this house. Not all places of worship, all places of God have an apostle in the house. Amen. And I know that the apostle that we have in this house is better than any Hulk in anybody else's house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Devil smashing, beating up the enemy apostle along with his faithful Pastor Bobby and Vanaya Pahaku. That's a team. So this is a blessed house to be blessed with such wonderful leadership. And God's got an apostle in this house. And I say that's pretty huge. I mean, you just go stack up all those Avengers together and they don't stack up to what God's got going on. Amen. So thank you so much, Lord, for bringing us here tonight on this Wednesday. Thank you so much for the leadership in this house. Apostle Rocky, Pastor Bobby. Thank you for Baniah Pahaku in training, pumping it up in Jesus' name. Doing so many great things here in this house tonight. Hallelujah. 
What a beautiful time. What a great day. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are not alone. How that Psalm 23rd Psalm? Oh, my gosh. I mean, milk the heart, man. Word of God, power. Thank you, Jesus. He's our comfort. Always holds us close. How's that walk down song? All my fears, all your fears, just like the Jericho walls come tumbling down, tumbling down. And if, and if, you, got, if you still got walls up, you better check that out. Play the song again and get those walls to come tumbling down, tumbling down. Amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, you ever wonder why? You ever wonder why that this service is called the power service? Oh, my gosh. Is that what it says up there on that wonderful graphic? Thank you, Jesus. Power. If, 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 you're, from, uh, if you're from Hawaii, if you're a local person with, uh, with uh, any uh, pidgin English in you, we all know that power is spelled with an A. Power. You get the power, yeah? Power service. Or you ever wonder why we got the power packs in the children's church? We got some power packs. We got power service. So maybe, just maybe, power is important to God, and we should take a look at it. So praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Power, power, power. Somebody. Somebody. Somebody, anybody, please, please, somebody, get filled tonight. Yes. Get anointed tonight. Get refreshed tonight. You need to prepare yourself for that, and you've got to want it. If you don't want it, if you're just going to sit there with some sort of attitude thinking like God got nothing for you, you are wrong. You can change your attitude. Prepare your heart. Prepare yourself to receive what, not what Pastor Al has for you, but what God has for you. Because believe me, he is in the house, and I just want to encourage you. I want to speak rhema into you. I want to speak power, refreshing, anointing into you right now. Because God's got it for you. And he wants to give it to you. He wants to pour it out for you. He's designed this word just for you because he loves you. So, Father, right now I pray in the name of Jesus that you would release that uh, Isaiah 10, 27 anointing, that burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God within us, within you. Look at your neighbor and say, within you. Look at your other neighbor and say, within me. That Isaiah 10, 27 power of God Anointing just flow right now in the name of Jesus. Pull down depression, pull down debt, pull down disease, doubt, double mindedness, disillusionedness, and divination. All the d, 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 d words led by the d bell. Pull them down and release freedom. Freedom! Father's Day, set the captives free. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's consume, let us devour, let us get lost, lost in, let us bathe in, let us run to the safety of the W-O-R-D. Right. We are on our way to the Word, which is true power. When you walk it, when you apply it, when you live it, that Ephesians 5.26, a little Psalm 119.9, it is like holy water. I said it's like holy water on my skin. It's like holy water on your skin. Get washed in the word. Get washed in the holy water of your skin. We don't want to abuse his grace. We need it every day. Come on. And if you don't know the song I'm speaking, you got to get it because it's encouraging and it'll pump you up in the Holy Ghost. And I think I might need some tie-down straps, Uncle Russell. Where is your tie-down straps, Uncle? Everybody knows that Uncle Russell get tie-down straps. And Pastor Holulu, he get the industrial tie-down straps. 
He could tie down a whale with his tie down straps. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let me tee this up. You know, you got to tee things up every once in a while. It's good to tee things up because when you tee things up, you know, you get that ball ready to pack, get ready to whack it down that golf course. Oh, I don't know, however God wants to send it, however far he wants to send it. Let me tee up this word for you here. In Luke 24, 49, the absolute, absolute single most important the greatest event that has ever happened, that ever will happen in history, just happened. Can anybody guess what that event in Luke 24 was? What that event was? No, it's not the moon landing. It's not the splitting of the atom. It is not the Cleveland Browns winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Help them, Sean. No, that's right. Who said the resurrection? The resurrection just happened, and there's two disciples on the road to Emmaus. It just says two disciples, but later on it clarifies and says one's name is Cleophas. They're on the road to Emmaus, and they're discussing the events of the past couple of days. Jesus comes up alongside them, and Jesus starts walking with them and uh, talking with them, but it says in the Word that he, they are kept, these two disciples are kept, from recognizing Jesus. Have you ever thought, brothers and sisters in Christ, that someday, somewhere, someplace in your life, you have been walking along, blah, 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 and Jesus is right there listening to you, talking with you, and participating in what you got going on? Well, you know what? He is, because he lives inside of us. Amen, everybody? Amen. So Jesus is with there, with these uh two disciples on the way to on the road of Emmaus they're talking story they invite Jesus to dinner Jesus stands and says peace be with you he shows them his scars he eats some fish and then it says in this and this is from this is a marked day in my life and then it says he opened their understanding Jesus opened before, they didn't, know, they didn't know who it was. Then Jesus, the word says, that he opened their understanding, and he gives this in 2449. He gives two critical things. And let's read that word together. Everybody ready? ready. Here we go. And now I send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised, but stay here until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we receive that power from heaven right now and always. In Jesus' mighty name, we all come in agreement and say amen. amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Sit down if you can. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. That word is powerful. It says it's powerful. And two key critical things happen in that word. First, he gives a command. Second, he gives a promise. First, he gives a command. And then he gives a promise. Can anybody identify what his command was? There you go. Stay here. Stay here. In fact, one translation says, stay here and wait. Stay here and wait. So a command is given to stay and wait. In another translation, it says, stay here and wait in Jerusalem. Oh, wow, stay here and wait in Jerusalem. I wonder why. Stay here and wait in Jerusalem. What's up with that, Lord? Well, I, I went and looked up Jerusalem just to look it up because it kind of hit me. Jerusalem. And the meaning of Jerusalem, and this is a little sidebar, get this, means double peace. Jerusalem, shalom, 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 peace and prosperity. Jerusalem means double peace. So in one translation, Jesus is telling his disciples to stay here and wait in double peace. Wow, wow, I receive that double peace, 
And I could do that. I could stay here and wait in double peace. And then the Lord gives them a promise. And his promise is that the Holy Spirit is going to fill them, is going to fill us with power. That is not a suggestion. That is not an idea. That is not a maybe. That is a promise from the God of this universe. And hallelujah, if it has not come true in our life, if it's not true right now, if it's not true in the future, but that's the word of God and it is solid, you can count on it. Can I get a good amen from somebody, please? Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. This is so, so significant. I mean, so significant. I mean, how, how power, power. We get power from the Holy Spirit. And this is, I think this is past important. I would say this is vital, imperative, and critical that we understand this whole thing about power. Because power is what God's power is what does everything. It's what moves everything is power. Power wins battles. Power wins wars. If you show up with a pistol and the enemy shows up with a cannon, who do you think has more power? And who do you, eh, praise the Lord, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, but I have walked through. Jesus God, Bible, who a Jesus. The cannon has more power than the pistol. God has more power than everybody, but the more power, the more victory. Power moves everything. Just think of all the, the power plants and the, and the, the dams and the windmills and everything just providing power for everything, for refrigeration, for light, for air conditioning, for cooking. Even if you just make barbecue outside, that's power. That heat has power and energy. No power, no life. No power, no life. The human heart, talk about a powerful generator. It's one of the most powerful generators this little 11 ounce heart that we have in our chest has so much power. It pumps blood to 75 trillion cells every beat. 75 trillion. 75 trillion cells of our body receive the blood from our little 11 ounce heart. The only place in our body, and this is a, a whole nother teaching, and I know Apostle knocked this one out of the park some time ago. The only place in our body that doesn't get blood from the heart is the cornea. The eye, the window to the soul does not get blood. Every place else in the body gets blood, but the cornea. The body is amazing. God made us amazing. The pressure from this little 11 ounce power generator can shoot blood 30 feet. 30 feet from this bugger right here. It, it pumps 2,000 gallons, 60,000 miles every day through our body. It beats 2.5 to 3 billion times in a lifetime. And daily, it produces enough energy, talk about power, to drive a truck, to drive a truck 20 miles right here. I mean, I think some guys get uh, Volkswagen, some guys driving Mack truck, you know, some guys, you know, get Toyota, whatever. But in general, this has enough power to move a truck 20 miles. Hallelujah. That's pretty awesome. So power, no power, no life. Power is critical. The power from God is amazing. It's a miracle. Life, the miracle of life, just birth and every breath, every movement comes from the power of that God gives us. The power, power can only come from God. Yeah. Us getting up in the morning, and, and pa Pastor Bobby says it all the time, that breath you breathe, that breath you woke up this morning, yeah. that's power, that's life coming from God. By Him, through Him, in Him, we have life, and we have life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The definition of power, and I, you know, 
I think this is my 21st year here in this church. I think it's my 25th year as a Christian, but my 21st year here in this house, which is pretty awesome. Thank you, Jesus. And a lot of definitions over those years, you know, the Greek and the Aramaic and the Hebrew, and I love those definitions. But this definition that I'm about to give you is probably the most amazing, and I'm not talking bad about any of those. They are good. But this definition is probably the most amazing, powerful, powerful definition that you have ever heard. I know when I heard this definition, I was like, whoo, almost knocked me out, kind power. Whoa! Here it is. And everybody, you know, I, I think a long time ago was uh, Pastor Junior uh, preached about the dunamis and the exousia. Well, let's open up this dunamis dunamis power that's in this scripture just a little bit and this is the power coming from the holy spirit here's the definition strength power ability strength power ability inert power to exert and put forth inert power to exert and put forth and this one really got me i'm like what power and this is the power that's supposed to come down on you power to perform miracles what what the word of god says and jesus said that we would receive power we would receive dunamis from the holy spirit to perform miracles what then it goes on in definition says moral power of excellence of soul moral power of excellence of soul the power to influence which brings riches and wealth power and resourcing arising from numbers and power consisting in or resting upon armies forces and hosts that's a lot of power can anybody say that's a lot of power that's a lot of power, that's a lot of power. thank you jesus holy crows what the heck what the heck okay jesus okay jesus you're getting ready to give me some power here you get you're giving us some power so let me tell you what to do and i'm saying if you are o b d ant ooh, and i'm not talking about ant man o b d ant obedient <laughs> Woo! We're talking about some earth-moving, shaking power. Power, sign me up, somebody. Plug me in. Plug me the heck in. Here's a key to power. Here's a key to God's power. And that key is you don't get power if you don't get plugged in. Because the disciples had to be obedient. They had to do what God said, and they had to stay where God told them to stay. Do what Jesus said. Stay where you're supposed to stay. Then the Holy Spirit comes and gives you power. You yeah, in, in double peace. If you don't stay and do and wait like Jesus said, you think the power gonna come? You're gonna go someplace else. You're gonna miss the power. You're not even plugged in. You're not even there to get plugged in. So key number one is to get plugged in. Get plugged in in prayer, in word, in church, in service, in seed, in sowing, in worship. Part of us getting plugged in is our proximity. Where are we? Where are you? Are you out holo holo with the devil someplace? Or are you someplace like getting plugged in? Plug in that plug to the power source of the Holy Ghost. And receive it so key number one get plugged in getting plugged in receiving from the Holy Spirit and then applying that power using that power is like a Holy Ghost nuclear reactor reactor actor just like power reactor power that's like Acts 1 8 it says you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and I might have to do some burpees to burn some power. Thank you, Jesus. However, and I know some people have gone through this because I have definitely gone through this in my life. Have, has there ever been a time in your life when you have felt burnt out, 
or your tank has been drained, or you're tired, or you no more energy, you no more, ah, I'm done, last straw, no more power. You feel like you're at the end of your power. And some days, whoo, to be truthful, man, I, I like spending my full gas tank for the day, so I go for it. We're using this gas. I got gas, I got power, let's use it. Let's do something for the Lord. So you go for it all the way, you put that pedal to the metal, and I usually... I usually run pretty hard and hot and, and doing something for the Lord. But at the end of the day, sometimes, chicka, 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 chicka. Oh, whoo, I need some power. And then there's some people in your life that are just power drainers. Not power rangers, power drainers. They are power suckers. They are high maintenance people that just pull power from you because they want power. So they take your power. Some of you may be one of these people. Hmm, could that be me, little mirror? Some of you may know one of these people who's a power drainer. They're just power zappers, energy, you know, high maintenance. Oh, brother, get thee behind me. Hallelujah. <laughs> so listen to this. Just uh, last month on June 28th, 16 years ago in 2005, Operation Red Wing took place in Afghanistan. Lone survivor Marcus Luttrell lost his teammates, Mike Murphy, Danny Dietz, and Matt Axelson in the mountains of Afghanistan in a wild, raging firefight. The lone survivor, Marcus Luttrell, ended up, and ended up throwing himself off a mountain, basically. And in the process of that firefight, Marcus was wounded several times and several of his wounds were through and through wounds that means hole on this side hole on that side hole on this side hole on the other side the bullet didn't come in and stay it went through and if anybody knows anything about ak-47s or, or 308 rounds that's a powerful round that these rounds went through marcus not only was he shot multiple times but he had a broken back his legs were broken and fact fractured in multiple places. He had head trauma and he bit his tongue in half. Okay? He was bus up, bleeding out, and just having the worst day of his life. He just lost three of his best friends. And one of his best friends who, who received the Medal of Honor, Mike Murphy, who they uh, named the workout after the body armor workout, Mike Murphy was screaming for help. He, was, he made the call to get the quick reaction force there. He was screaming for help. He was screaming for his friends to come help him. And Marcus couldn't help his friend. In fact, the screams were so loud and terrible, Marcus had to plug his ears so he didn't have to listen to his friend's scream and eventually die. Marcus was bus up. Power. Blood was draining from his body in multiple places. Marcus was dying. He just lost three of his best friends, and he was dying. His power was draining. Just like the power of Jesus Christ on that cross when he died, and how he drained, and how he gave his all. Marcus, is, Marcus was dying. But what happened with Marcus in the midst of that terrible situation somewhere someplace somehow Marcus Luttrell found power he got power and the power that he got dragged him he dragged himself he crawled for seven miles he crawled all bust up as he was broken back shot through and through, bit off his lip, broken legs, S head trauma. Somehow he found the power to drag himself seven miles. How did he do that? Biggest, hugest, most awesomest principle, well, I, I believe it is, that this ministry teaches, and that's never quit. He never quit. No matter how bad that situation was, no matter how terrible, no matter how much blood he was losing, that man never quit. And then he took what he needed to do to get to safety, and he chopped it up to reach above my head, draw a line. 
Maybe I can't, maybe you can't, maybe Marcus Luttrell can't go seven miles in our current situation, but I think I can go to that line just above my head. And he pulled himself to that line. And once he got to that line, he reached up again, drew another line. I could pull myself to that line. And once he got to that line, he reached up again, drew a line, and he pulled himself to that line. Some of you sitting here in this house tonight have been so drained of power, so busted up by the enemy, and you may not be able to do all the things that you need to do, all the things that are in the task in your life may be too hard. It may be too huge. It may be too monumental. But you can never quit. And at least you can draw a line. And maybe you can get yourself just to that little line. And maybe that line is not doing drugs just one more day. Not doing drugs. I could do I maybe I can't stay sober for the next year, but I can I could I can stay sober for tomorrow. And maybe I can leave that drink on the shelf, maybe not for a year, a month, whatever. But I could do it to tomorrow. I could draw a line and just get through tomorrow. And just get through that one day at a time. And you just keep pulling yourself and pulling yourself. And eventually, when he got his seven miles, he got set free. And somebody came and saved him. And the Rangers and the Special Forces guys were out looking for him. And Marcus ended up getting saved. Lone Survivor's got an incredible story. And... Um, wonderful podcast by Marcus Luttrell, The Lone Survival. So what is your one line? What is your thing that you need to pull yourself to never quit? That's the, that's, that's the next key. Never quit. Never quit. So one, stay plugged in. Two, never quit. Never quit is like keeping the switch on. Keeping the switch on. Okay? It's not go church, no go church. Go church, no go church. Keeping the switch on and staying plugged in is going church and going church and going church and going church. Staying plugged in, never quitting, keeping the switch on is not read the word, no read the word. Read the word, no read the word. Read the word, no read the word. Tithe, no tithe. tithe no. Read the word and read the word and read the word. And maybe you don't need to read the whole Bible, but hey, draw a line. Get a couple verses. Get a couple verses. Draw a line. Maybe tithe. And you, you're thinking tithe the whole year, and that's a special way. Get some faith. Tithe. And keep tithing. Get plugged in. Keep the light on. Never quit. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Leave the light on because that light, that consistency is God in you, and people see that. They see the light, and they're drawn to the light. They want to receive the light. That's why Jesus did this for the apostles, for the disciples, so that they could bring people. That, I mean, that's just what Jesus did was an incredible movement of the Holy Spirit. Amen, somebody? Amen. Don't just be a Christian on Sundays. Be a Christian, don't be a Christian. Be a Christian, don't be. Be a Christian all the time. Leave the light on. Stay plugged in. Hide it under a bushel. Oh, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let the light shine. Keep the light on. Who pulled a plug, brother? Who pulled a plug? You pull a plug, the vacuum goes off, everything stays dirty. Leave it plugged in. Let it shine. Key number three. The greater the overcoming, the greater the power. The greater the overcoming, the greater the power. God wants us to endure. In 1 Kings 19, Elijah ran from the most wicked, the most evil, not just the most wicked, evil king, but the most wicked, most evil queen ever, Ahab and Jezebel. I mean, that's like, the, that's like worse than the Joker and the Penguin, you know, or what the heck's the other bad evil villains out there. But Elijah ran from these evil people into the wilderness. I, I, was, I was almost going to say the, uh, you know, there's another evil king and queen that we see on the news every once in a while that sometimes forgets what they're saying, but we're not going to talk about those people because we're going to stay focused. 
and we're going to get some power. We're going to stay plugged in. We're going to obey. So Elijah was challenged, and he ran. He ran to the wilderness. He wanted to commit suicide. He questioned himself. Elijah was ready to quit. But then just like you tonight, he got a word from God. And God spoke to him. And God said, go stand. So Elijah went to go stand. And when he stood there, I could see him. Well, okay, I'm ready, Lord. Uh, give, give, give it to me. I got these two people chasing me down, trying to kill me. I need something. I need a weapon. I need some power. He's standing there, and then the wind comes. But the power wasn't in the wind. So he's standing there just like God said, and then the earthquake comes. Come on, look. This, this is it. You're going to get But the power was not in the earthquake. And then the fire came. And you know what I was thinking? Man, maybe this is how earth, wind, and fire got their name. Dun, 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 earth, wind, and fire. The wind, the quake, the fire. The fire came. And still, the power wasn't in the fire. What? Then finally, that still small voice came. And it gave the instructions that we got this weekend about being couriers. God told Elijah to go anoint Jehu king. Go be a courier. Go have Jehu anointed king. He gave him some instructions to follow out. And we all know what happened after that. Jehu was actually the one who took out the evil queen. Well, he actually had the eunuchs throw him over the, the, the side of the building there. But the bottom line is Elijah waited. And he got power. He got instructions in that still small voice. So key number three is the greater the overcoming, like Elijah overcame greatly, the greater the power. Key number four, 1 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. and of and of a sound, a sound mind. God gave them understanding, remember? That understanding that you get is that sound mind because that sound mind kind of puts everything together and you're not struggling with dee, 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 dee. sound mind. Ooh, Jerusalem, double peace. Whoo, power, ready to go do something. Power, love, and a sound mind. This is that light switch on and knowing why the light switch is on. You know, and you're good with it, and your mind is settled, and you have that Jerusalem double peace. Power, love, and of a sound mind. No fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So when you see that, and when you feel that spirit of fear creeping up, Know that it is not from God. Amen? Amen. Power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Without understanding this sacred book, it's just ink on pages. But when the power comes on you from on high and the Holy Spirit reveals to you and gives you the understanding what this word says, then you have power to go out and execute this word. And it doesn't just stay on your shelf. It just doesn't sit on the seat of your car. But this word starts living through you. It becomes alive. And the power of God helps people. The power of God seeds into people's lives. The power of God prays for people. The power of God looses miracles. Remember the definition? power to do miracles that power is in there but we got to understand it and get it and receive it and go out and do something with it Amen. if we get all this stuff read 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 but we don't have those works that faith in action that application the power stays in here and the power stays here you got to loose that power and let it go bang shoot that arrow in the name of jesus and you know what Sometimes you hit the target, you don't hit the target. That God's business. That's his business. Your business is to be O, B, D, and. 
Obedient. Do what he says. Amen. That power flows. The action of walking out our faith daily starts to move. And you start to see God in everything. Power. Last key right here. Last key right here. And I am dressed the way I am dressed because of O, B, D, ants. I'm dressed the way I'm dressed because of obedience. I did not want to dress like this, but I'm sitting there with the Lord last night, and I'm asking him, Lord, what do you want me to wear tomorrow? What? Lord. And he's, he's starting to minister to me. I'm like, what? And he said, dress as a symbol. I'm like, what? Dress as a symbol? Dress as a symbol. Okay. I can dress as a symbol. Because key number five is to have a symbol. I'm wearing this shirt because it's camouflage shirt. I'm ready for battle. I'm ready. This is my symbol of battle. I'm wearing these pants because although my sins may be as scarlet and I, I got sin in my life, he washes me white as snow. And I'm not a white pants guy. I didn't want to wear white pants. But lo and behold, I'm wearing white pants because God said the dress is a symbol. And then I'm wearing these boots. And here's the big one. I didn't want to wear these boots. These boots were actually broken. The <laughs> zipper was broken. So I'm doing the Gideon thing, and I'm having my, you know, doubt trying to get out, and me and God's going back and forth about what the boots and the pants, and I, I, Lord, I really, can I just dress regular? You know, can I just get out of this? O, B, D, ant. God fixes the zipper. God, if you want me to wear these boots, you'll fix that, you know, you'll do something to show me that I'm supposed to wear these boots. So lo and behold, he fixes the zipper. Oh, man, I guess I got to wear the boots, Lord. Thanks. I really love these boots. But the zipper was broke. Now it ain't broke. That ain't me. That my father. Now tell me that ain't power. So in our lives, we have to have symbols to remind us of his power. Because so, we forget. We lose sight. We get off track. We, things distract us. So when you have symbols, and, and keep in mind, these symbols, these symbols are not God, but they remind us of God and who he is in our lives. These symbols do not have power, but our God does have power. This cross does not have power, but it reminds us of the one who does have power. The snake on the pole in the wilderness did not have power. It was just a snake on a pole. But the symbol and the reminder of who God is, that had power. Amen. The pile of rocks that they had to take stones when they, when they crossed the river, that was a reminder. The two Lord's Team ministry hands, shaking hands, that's a symbol. That's a symbol of power. It's a symbol of unity. The swords that Apostle has in his office are symbols of of power. Jehovah Nisse. There's a new Nisse flying, and I kind of likes it up in Apostle's office. God, our banner. Not because the flag has, not because these banners have some sort of magic or something on them, but they remind us of where the power is at. And when I am reminded of the power keeper of where the power is at, just burpees. Navy SEALs. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Life symbols remind us of Jesus. And when we get reminded of Jesus, we get a little room, 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 room. You may be driving a Volkswagen or a Toyota, but he's getting ready to room, give you some Dodge Charger. Hallelujah. Some. Boss 302 Mustang. Thank you, Jesus. Through power! I look to the hills where my help cometh from. My helps come from who? The Lord. Those hills are a symbol. A symbol of God's power. Haleakala. I look at Haleakala. I say, hey, man, that's my Lord. He built that big old thing. 
That's his power, not my power. So if you're feeling some drain, if you're feeling like your gas tank is running on empty, look at yourself. Do that check. You know, examine your ways. Some of us, our check needs to be from here this way. Check up from the neck up. And make sure you got all these keys that I just share with you, that God just shared with you, turned on. Number one, stay plugged in. Number two, keep the light on. Don't quit. Number three, the greater the overcoming, the greater the power. So endure. Number four, no fear. And number five, have a symbol. God is so good, and he releases power into you right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love the Lord, and I love all the children. Is there any power packs in here tonight? Power pack, power pack, power pack. Do we still have the power packs? Or are we forerunners and uh, kind of mix? Ooh. Snack pack. We go shake them up, put them together. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what's going on tonight. A little unity, little power, a little coming together. Thank you, Jesus. If you have not received Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, we're going to give you that opportunity here tonight. If you really want power, I mean, this is like the spark, the beginning of power when you receive Jesus into your heart. So if God is speaking to you tonight, we're going to pray a prayer and you can receive that power. You can have that eternal life. Because once you are born, you have eternal life, believe it or not. But the question is, where are you going to spend that life? When your last breath here on this earth happens, where is your next breath going to be? And where is it going to take place? We've got to make sure we're not uh, spreading the wrong kind of power. We're going to have good power. Where is your next breath going to take place? Your last breath here on earth should be your first breath in heaven. Really, that's what you want. Because the other alternative is the lake of fire, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the pain and the burning never ceases, and that's what your eternal life turns out to be. You can live on streets of gold with Jesus and, and the rest of us who have chosen to live a life with the Lord and be what we call, what the word shares, uh, as, as born again. You get renewed, you get refreshed, and you get that eternal life with Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and God the Father. So if God is speaking to you tonight, and that's you, pray this prayer with all your heart because God's about to change your heart and give you ultimate power. If you want to renew your dedication and your eternal life with Jesus, you can also follow along and pray. But don't just say the words. Listen to the words of what God's given you. Receive the power, the refreshing, and the anointing. Amen, everybody? So if God's speaking to you, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of the sin that I have committed. I turn from that sin. I repent. And I turn towards you. I receive you, Lord, into my heart right now. I receive your power. I receive your love. I receive your forgiveness. That I will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, please call the office. And we're, we're here to help you. This house is here to help, to assist, to give you a Bible, to give you a spiritual, personal trainer, or whatever the Lord would have. This is an obedient house that listens to the Spirit of God, that follows God's Word. These are our values. The Word of God, the Holy Spirit, never quitting. These are solid, powerful values that God has given us in this house. And the fruit is evident and the fruit is abundant. Come and be part of that fruit. And if you would like to give and plant a seed and be part of God's movement uh, and just be a blessing and be blessed in being a blessing, you can plant a seed by going to wordoftruthmaui.org 
and hit the green button. I'm Vanna Brown. Hallelujah. You can have Vanna White or you can have Vanna Brown. Praise our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. We 